In this example, we'll look at doing an analysis of variance using Excel. There are three conditions, A, B, and C. We've gotten the mean and the standard deviation using the same functions that we had in previous examples. And as in the first example with descriptive statistics, we also have the sum of each one of the conditions and the sum of x squared. Now what we can do is add across these rows to get different values. If we add across the sum value, we get the grand total or the sum of all the x values, which is 105. If we copy that and paste it in the row with the sum of x squared, now we have the sum of x squared for the entire study as well. For the sum of squares, now we have to enter in a different equation where we take the sum of x squared minus the sum of x, that total squared, divided by n using that uh, computational equation for the sum of squares that we've used quite often during the semester. So if we take, uh, put in our equal sign to say that we're going to add an equation, we take the sum of x squared, which we have in B11, and subtract the sum of x squared. The sum of x is in B10, and we're going to square it, and then divide by n. Now we can do the count function again. Uh, there are five observations in each one of these conditions, so we can just uh, divide by 5. So we have our sum of x squared minus the sum of x squared divided by 5, and that would be 12. So if we do that, we can copy our sum of squares formula for condition A and copy it for conditions B and C. So those will be the sum of squares for each of those conditions. And again, if we take the sum of that row, now we have the sum of squares within. Down here is a summary table for analysis of variance. When we did our calculations by hand in class, we usually put them in a summary format here, similar to what you would find in a normal computer printout. What we'll do, this will look very similar to SPSS when we're done. We have our sum of squares within, we already calculated, we can just put that down here. We can say that F12 uh, is what this cell should be. For sum of squares total, we have the values for this as well. We need to take the sum of x squared minus the sum of x squared divided by n. In this case, it would be the total n, 5 in each of the three conditions, so a total n, a large n, a 15. So what we'll do is we'll put a formula very similar to the sum of squares formula we used in line 12, and we'll say the sum of x squared, which is f11, minus the sum of x, which is an f10, squared, divided by large N, which is 15. That would be the sum of squares total for the entire study. Sum of squares total is made up of sum of squares between and sum of squares within. So if we have total and within, we can subtract those two to get between. So if we subtract C17 from C18, we'll get sum of squares between. Now our degrees of freedom for the ANOVA, we could put these in by hand. Degrees of freedom between is K minus 1. K is the number of conditions. We have three conditions in our study. 3 minus 1 would be 2. And degrees of freedom within will be large N minus K. We have 15 people in the study total, or 15 observations in the study. And 15 minus 3 is going to be 12. To get mean squared, we take the sum of squares divided by degrees of freedom.
So if we could take the sum of squares between in cell C16 and divide that by the degrees of freedom between in D16, we have the sum of, we have the mean squared. We can do that same thing for within. Our mean squared within would be 3.833. The F value is a mean squared between divided by mean squared within. So we take our two mean squares and divide them. Mean squared between is in E16. Mean squared within, E17. Divide those two. We get an F value of 9.13. Now, once we've had this done doing it by hand, we compare that to a critical value. I've said that computer printouts give you the actual P value, or probability of committing a type 1 error. What we'll do here is use a different function. It's the F distribution function. So F D I S T. What you have with this, you have X. X is the value you want to compare. That's the actual F value, which we calculated. So X in this case is equal to F16, which is where we have our F value. Our degrees of freedom, one is degrees of freedom between, right? The degrees of freedom for our numerator. And those are two. We can put in two, or if we want to use the same uh, cell designation, we can say that that is in D16. And then degrees of freedom two would be the degrees of freedom for the denominator. Degrees of freedom for the denominator, or within in this case, are in D17. So the probability of making a type 1 error is 0 0.0039. Now, just like in a earlier demonstration, you evaluate this number by comparing it to our normal alpha level. That number should be 0.05 or less. In this case, it is. So this F value, which we could probably tell is going to be significant, is actually statistically significant. Eta squared one of the measures of effect size we discussed is the sum of squares t between divided by sum of squares total. Be easy to get in this case. We just take sum of squares between, which is in C16, and divided by sum of squares total, which is in C18. And that's our eta squared value. So we account for about 60% of the variability in our study with our independent variable. That will be a very uh, fairly simple way of calculating the analysis of variance. In this case, our F value with 2 and 12 degrees of freedom is 9.13. The significance is P less than 0 0.01 again, and eta squared equaling 0 0.60.